I loved the captain's log myself. Um, it's ideal for an actor like me. I, I like a, a little hook like that, a little um, diary entry to warm myself up, to prepare the audience while titillating them at the same time. Also, it allows one to use one's voice as a warning uh, or as a seduction or as a resistance. So you could, if it was Captain's Log, start eight four eight one, and the voice got low like that, you knew right away this was going to be a very mysterious, rather frightening episode. Or it could be Captain's Log, start eight five zero one point two. Today, Tuvok did something wonderful. You knew it was going to be a thing about friendship. You know, so I think that that it it, it allowed the captain to to show, in, in my case, her warmth, and uh, I think her her emotional depth, and a certain music. So I liked it very much. I was the only girl. Uh, very brave, very brave for Paramount, I think. Very different kind of captain uh, uh, a woman would be by her very nature. I've always said, uh, uh, I loved. I got us lost, it's true to form, <laughs> but I loved them deeply. And it was the only time in, in my life that I put uh, my love for a collective above my love for science. And my passion to get this crew home, at least some of them, became greater than anything else, which is why I adored the end game in which the Admiral, with great happiness gives her life to the captain and to the future. For me, it, it was the exploration of uh, um, what female sacrifice feels like when it doesn't feel like sacrifice at all. Mm. Uh, Janeway was an ardent scientist, and she was very, very brave. And she could have been lost in space forever, and it would have suited her just fine. But uh, she discovered along the way a little thing called empathy. And I think her self-knowledge as it grew and evolved became one of the great trademarks of Star Trek of all time, the evolution of a human being. What do I think makes a good captain? Uh, I think all of us would say the same thing. Uh, allegiance. Great, great courage. And by that I mean moral courage. Um, I think that the essence of a great captain is uh, all others before the captain. And the captain will go down with the ship. And that is a way of life. It is a strict and important and undying and unchanging discipline. The captain is above all things disciplined. The captain is uh, responsible for the well-being of everyone else on that ship. And at the same time, the captain must be the risk taker. So I think uh, a great captain has courage, soul, a kind of prescience, an inability to give up, and a formidable, formidable indefatigability. We don't sleep. We don't crave food. The material things of the world are far less important to us than they are, I would say, to the rest of the crew. What delights, moves, and feeds is space and those that we have brought to share it. I would have to say there's been a brief rest and another mission, and another mission. I think she's one of those. Just as I would like to say to you happily, I hope I die on the stage at 90, I think she'll die in space, and that's quite appropriate. That's where she'd like to be. I think that she will not have a, a companionship, that she missed that. I think that her personal puzzle pieces are put together through this crew, but she saved. Some of those friendships 
have been retained. Uh, when she said goodbye to Tuvok, I think she said goodbye to a very special kind of friendship that she doesn't hope to uh, repeat or reclaim. She's solitary, but wise and full of life. And for her, the great joy of it all is up there. I look back now on my tenure as the first female captain with great pride. And I must say, even coming down here in the car, I thought, how do you feel? And I thought, deeply, I feel great. Uh, uh, that was hard work. That was uh, incredibly challenging work. And at its very best, I don't think it gets much better. I gave it everything I had to give for a very long period of my life, and I'm quite pleased.